Hey everyone, this is Mike DeVita, and this is part two of configuring FreeNAS 9.3 to work with your Windows Server 2012 Active Directory environment. Um, in part one, we went through and configured a Windows Server 2012 R2 uh, server to use Active Directory, GHCP, DNS with Unix extensions. Part two, we're going to go through and configure FreeNAS 9.3 to bind to Active Directory, and then um, we'll then go ahead and configure NFS and CIFA shares, and then possibly in part the end of part two, we might start touching base on configuring Ubuntu uh, Linux systems to use that Active Directory service and NFS shares. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and log into the FreeNAS uh, admin web panel. Uh, mine is at this 21.100. That's what I picked when I did the install. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through the wizard here. Uh, I already closed this down, so probably the first time you log into FreeNAS, this wizard's what's going to pop up automatically for you. Oops. I need to set the. You need to set, make sure to set the time zone to whatever your time zone's going to be. I'm just going to redo that real quick. America Phoenix. It's uh, important to use this because it's going to offset the system time based on whatever your time zone you pick. And since we're binding to Active Directory, the time on the FreeNAS server has to match pretty closely to the time that's on the Windows server. All right, in this case, I'm just going to pick the only volume that's there. You might have multiple of these. <coughs> All right, and here we're going to pick the realm name, which is ac the actual t full top-level domain name of your uh, domain. In this case it's relative.media for me. And then the administrative account uh, for that you're going to use to bind. You can use a uh, another account that you create but you need to create the computer object first and then assign whatever user you, you specify here as owner of that object. But for this case we're just going to use administrator. <clears throat> but for this case we're just going to use administrator <clears throat> alright this is going to ask you here to set up shares I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, next on that because I don't want to set up shares at this time Here I'm going to set yes to console messages because this will enable messages down here in the footer. Um, you can set this email account information up if you'd like, but you don't necessarily need to do it. Once the wizard's completed, it's going to go through and run and restart services, create any shares that you decided to create if if you did it, um, and then after that you're going to we brought back to the system information the home page of this uh, there's a couple things we, we need to do um, before we can get things working fully um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through each one of these tabs and change anything that I personally think that I need to change first thing is this host name we don't use dot local we're gonna use I'm gonna use storage one dot relative dot media I don't like to bind on any IP address available. I like to bind, specify this. Um, oops. If you want to set up email, this is where you do it. 
in the production environment I use mandrel um, I use mandrel here it's free up to 12,000 emails I think yeah, 12,000 emails a month free and it allows you to have a 587 outgoing I think a 587 port outgoing because my ISP Cox blocks port 25 inbound and outbound so I use this to relay emails inbound <clears throat> but since this is a test environment I'm not going to go ahead and set that up uh, da -da -da -da. okay everything looks good here let's go ahead and look at directory again looks like I'm going to give the page a refresh see if anything looks like we got a a lot of times when things don't start we'll look I'll look here to see if what the error messages are and then I'll go and you know search on Google for whatever those errors are sometimes you just gotta play with Active Directory here to get it to work right um, I don't ever when I when I've set it up before the wizards never really worked for me I like to check verbose logging Unix extensions this since we installed it on the Microsoft on the server we need to have this checked as well uh, allow I use use default domain if you check this the prefix of whatever your domain name is or whatever I'm sorry your um, NetBIOS name is relative media doesn't get prefixed to the usernames. <clears throat> and I think that should be it. ID map backend. ID map backend actually needs to be set to Active Directory. Alright, that's going to start up here and it's going to take a minute. Uh, one good way to check to make sure that everything started up is to enable SSH on the NAS and then log into it through SSH and using like PuTTY or something like that and see if you can run a couple commands to pull back Active Directory users. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that. If you go to the services tab, SSH here, go ahead and enable that. You're actually going to need, for the very first time, you're going to need to log in with enable this option, log in as root with password. Otherwise you have to use SSH keys to log in. So fire up PuTTY and log in to the server, the NAS, as root, and then whatever the password is you use to log into the web UI. Now, if Active Directory bound, bind is working successfully, if you run get ent password, P A S S W D, you should get back a list of all of the users, and at the bottom you'll have the Active Directory users. You see here is administrator and then my ID. Here's those username and pass those IDs and uh, user IDs and groups that we set. And then if you run an ID image Davida on that, you get back all those those users those domains or I'm sorry those groups we created domain users Linux users media. So you can see it's actually working. Uh, FreeNAS is actually able to pull back all of that information. Also, you can do wb info u, and that'll give you back users uh, that are on Active Directory. WB info g will give you groups, Active Directory groups. Um, that will show you only Active Directory groups and it won't show you detailed information about those users like their IDs and that kind of thing. Uh, get ent group will show you the Active Directory groups if there are any. And I actually I think now that that reminds me I think as of FreeNAS 9.3 release get ent group doesn't bring back groups for some reason. I think there's a bug out there for it. I can't remember the uh, bug number, but I'll try to update the video with with it. Um, but so if you run get ent group and you don't get back group IDs, you know domain users, Linux users, and those. it's probably because 
of a bug or maybe <clears throat> or something that I'm I'm pretty sure it's a bug. But <clears throat> one way you can check for groups is if you run that WB info dash G and you get back a list of those groups, then you know it's working properly. <clears throat> Alright, so the next thing that we need to get set up is we need to create some shares. And I've got this vault here, and I like to create a couple data sets. Downloads. And you'll see where these come into play. Downloads, pictures. We're going to do folder remapping in Active Directory group policies to force all of our Active Directory based or Windows based systems to use those folders by default. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, pictures. Software. And we need to create one more called Home. This is where we're going to keep all of our Active Directory Linux user home directories. <clears throat> Alright, so let's work on the home directory first. We need to change the permissions on that home on that that mount point. Right now it's set as root wheel, and we actually need to change this to be root is fine for the user the wheel, the group needs to be Linux users and then we set it to 7, 7, and then 5 Unix and set permissions recursively okay, now that's updated now let's do I use the media group since everyone belongs to it by default for downloads, pictures, software So we're going to go ahead and pick the media group. Uh, just as an FYI, all of the Active Directory users and groups will always show at the bottom. <clears throat> Pictures is next. If you don't change the permissions on this stuff, and then you go to start trying to get everything working, you're going to get problems. Uh, we might need to go back and change this to be, um, <coughs> excuse me, Windows type, permission type, but we'll find out here in a minute. Alright, so once that's done, go over here to the, uh, I clicked on that too fast, services tab, CIFIS, I clicked the tool there. We're going to change some of this around. This work group right here needs to match whatever your work group is for um, that you set up in the domain here. And I think it should be. Oops. Yeah, relative media. I like to have uh, a normal level of logs, local master, and uncheck this time server for domain. I don't like to use guest accounts, but if you did, you could set it to, you could create some media user, and then rather than setting the permissions on these to be owned by root user, you could set them to be owned by the media user, and then give people access to that. Or let's say if you had one one data set that you you wanted everyone, you including guests, to have access to, you could create a guest account, for example, in Active Directory, and then give the guest account right here. You'd set this to the guest account, and then it, on the um, sh data set, you change the permissions for the user to be that guest account owned by that guest account, and then you'd share that folder, and then they'd be able to get to that folder. For this case, we're just going to leave it to nobody. Uh, 
I'll set this to SMB3. And click OK. Alright, the next thing we're going to do, since we've got CIFA set up now, is I'm going to go ahead and fire up this Windows box here. I need to install VMware tools on this, it looks like, first, real quick. So I'll be right back when that's done. Alright, so this uh, Windows box is re rebooted. Um, you can see here we've got Internet Access now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bind this Windows at 7 box to our Active Directory domain. How you're going to do that is you're going to go here to your Start menu, right click a computer, and go to Properties. You're going to go to Advanced System Settings, and then click on the Computer Name tab, and then click Change. You can give it some computer name if you haven't already. And then, but the major point, important part is this domain right here. You have to have Windows 7 Enterprise, Professional, and or I think Ultimate. You can't have like Windows 7 Home, or Windows Vista Home, or even I think Windows 8 or 8.1 Home. You have to have like the professional version in order to be able to use this. <clears throat> so if you run into that problem, you need to upgrade. Uh, you're going to type in the domain name, relative.media in my case. Hit OK. And you're going to type in the administrative account, username, and password. And it'll sit there and churn for a minute, and it's going to pop up and say, Welcome to <clears throat> the relative media domain. Look at that. Click OK. And then it's going to want to reboot. Go ahead, let it reboot. All right, so when the system reboots, you'll notice it says, hey, control delete to log in. Go ahead and hit control alt delete. And first things first, you notice win01 slash local admin. That's if you want to log in locally using the local user account. If you ever forget the computer name, by the way, this is a handy tip. Let's say you forget the computer name and, oh, look at this, log on to relative media. But let's say you want to log into the local account. If you use a period and a backslash, you notice how it changes the log on to, to Win01. It's helpful for if you're logging into a system where <coughs> you forget the, the name of it. You can just do backslash and then local admin and then log right in. But for our case, we're going to log in using the domain administrative account. Oops. Ah, log on to. <clears throat> Relative media slash administrator. Uh, for Windows, I think for Windows 7 boxes and newer, you can actually do the something like that. You, it works both ways. Once it loads in, 
let's go ahead and see if we can browse some of those network shares. You do have a backslash backslash storage of one slash. Got to turn on network discovery. Let's see if we can try that again. <clears throat> All right, so it would help to actually <laughs> um, set up some shares first before we go and try and browse network. So let's go back to the free NAS control panel here and click on sharing and then click on the Windows Cephas shares and then let's pick those paths that we created. Now, vault, downloads, call that download. Here's where you'd allow guest access if, uh, where'd it go? Allow guest access if you wanted. <clears throat> I just go ahead and accept the defaults, click on OK. We're gonna add in downloads. Oops, I'm sorry, software. And then the last one is the pictures. Once those are added, should go back to our Windows 7 box here. Hit refresh, and then they show up. And now I should have pr privileges to write in here because I'm part of that Linux users group. Or I'm sorry, that media group. So if I call this a test folder, I'm going to create some files in here, new text document, alright, and I'm going to fire up, um, I'm going to fire up SSH on the end of the NAS, <clears throat> and I'm going to go to that, the mount slash vault slash downloads folder. Do an ls alh and look at that. It's seen that it's the administrator user and it's the media group. It's pulling that from Active Directory. Oops. Same thing with the files there. <clears throat> that test file. Alright, so Active Directory is uh, working as expected. So is uh, FreeNAS, and it's properly binding those uh, those oh, uh, permissions over. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up group policy objects to go through and map the downloads folder, the pictures folder, and we'll create one more share for documents. And we'll map all three of these to a network share. So when a user logs into a system, it, instead of it saving downloads to the local machine, or documents to the local machine or pictures to the local machine, they'll actually save it to those shares we created. All right, so once all three of these shares are created, we've got downloads, software, and pictures. We're gonna go ahead and enable the folder redirection. Now I've already gone through and done this, so uh, just follow along to what my settings are, um, and you'll have the same basic prompts. So under user configuration, policies, windows settings, there's a folder redirection uh, option. Go ahead and click on that. Click on documents and right click and go to properties. And you're going to set basic and you want to, oops, I'm sorry, downloads. Downloads is what we're looking for. You're going to go to downloads, right click on go to properties. You're going to set this to basic, redirect to the following location, and type in the path to the downloads share that we created. What this will do is this will make everyone that has a U account and binds to Active Directory just sh to share this one exact folder. If you wanted people to have subfolders like based on users, like that, for example, you could use this create a folder for each user under the root path. Then, by specifying this, every time someone logs in to the domain on a, an account on a, a, a computer, the system will create a username 
subfolder under downloads. So like administrator, for example. But since this is a home lab environment for me, I just leave it just, I have everyone share that one class. Go ahead and go to settings, uncheck grant exclusive rights to the downloads, click apply, and then click OK. You're going to do the same thing for pictures. Go to properties, same exact thing, basic, redirect to the following location, give this path, go to the settings tab, uncheck grant exclusive rights to pictures, click OK. <clears throat> The other thing that a lot of people get hung up on is um, passwords and because a lot of times by default the uh, Active Directory has a pretty strict um, password account policy where it's like requires special characters, password has to be seven days long, can't be older than 42 days, and then it remembers 24 passwords which is pretty freaking complex and, and for a home lab environment. So to change those settings, that's actually under computer configuration, policies, windows settings, security settings, account policies, and then there's the password policy right there. Um, you can change the password history enforcement. And then this is the one that a lot of people don't like. This one and then the maximum password age. This one here forces you to have to use uh, all of these things. So I usually define the policy setting and hit disabled. The other one is this maximum password age. For my production environment, I bump it up to 90 days. Basically, the password's going to expire after 90 days if it doesn't get changed. The other one is this password to remembered. It changes down to 6. And that should be it for the basic baseline configuration of the group policies. Um, it'll take a while for the policy to um, propagate, but there's a way you can force it. And I'll show you. Let me just get the screen adjusted. <clears throat> so there's a way to force group policy propagation when you make changes like frequently. If you open a command prompt as an administrator, run as administrator, and you run gp update slash force, it'll force a, a group policy sync. What will happen is it'll go out to the Active Directory, Domain Controller, and pull down the group policy, apply it. Um, it's going to give you a warning about can't do it because it must be processed before system startup or user log on. So it's going to force you to log off. Go ahead and hit yes. It's going to log you off. When you log back in, folder redirection should be working. So now that we're logged in, go ahead and open up this and go to computer. You see we've got three of these shares here, downloads, software, and pictures. And if you go to downloads here, you can see that there's that test folder I created with that test document. Go to pictures. This is from your local pictures library. If you create a new folder or a new bitmap image there, for example, it should show up in pictures, and there it is. You can delete it. Now, since we didn't, uh, enable ex export recycle bin in um, in uh, FreeNAS here it's not going to let you to dump stuff to a recycle bin so what we're gonna do is if you go to the sharing Windows CFS and go to pictures for example and hit edit advanced mode this export recycle bin I think if you enable that it'll allow you to Add and delete things in here without permanently deleting them. See how it says you move one. Now it says you want to move this to the recycle bin. Now it doesn't force a permanent delete. <clears throat> it just dumps it to your recycle bin. 
So you can go ahead and use that on downloads if you want. For downloads, I don't like to use the recycle bin. Um, for pictures, documents, and those things, and software, I definitely do. All right, so that should be basically it. Um, we've got Active Directory working with FreeNAS. Uh, FreeNAS sees all of our users. And the next step that we need to do is we need to configure our Ubuntu system to work with NFS. So let me uh, pull up and get that situated, and I'll be right back. All right, so what I've got here is a uh, basic Ubuntu 14.04.1 14 uh, x64 server install. Uh, it can reach out to the internet, which is those are just Google's domain server dom uh, domain name servers. It can do DNS lookups. And that's about it. So I'm going to install um, NFS. And first, we're going to do Active Directory uh, binding using SSSD. Uh, there's a great guide um, that you can use, which is called Enterprise Authentication. Um, oops. And you can get to it from this article here. And basically, you're going to go through and install these and then copy the uh, credentials information and I'll show you that um, into here this file, this sssd.conf <clears throat> and they give you a basic example configuration that has tons of stuff in it um, I don't use a lot of it so let's go ahead and get started with that I'm going to go ahead and sudo apt get install And the other one that that doesn't tell you to do is uh, tools. I like this one, and I also like the LDAP utils. Um, LDAP utils allows you to do a couple extra troubleshooting things. Hmm. Ah, that's why. I forgot to run um, apt-get update first, so I'm going to go ahead and let that run through. Alright, and it's going to give you a bunch of packages, ask you if you really want to continue, hit yes, and hit enter. Let it run through, it's going to take a little bit. So what we're going to use is we're actually going to embed the, pl the password in, in plain text in this ssd.conf file. Uh, it's probably not recommended best practice. Um, we should be using Kerberos key tabs to do this. Um, that's the best way to do it in production. But like I said, this is a home lab. Um, this is just basically to get an intro to it and getting everything working. Um, if you're really curious, you can look into Kerberos key tabs and getting those configured. It's not too much more involved to do. Um, it just takes some kind of back-end knowledge as far as how to get Kerberos working and key tabs. Uh, once you get it working, you can actually then relay that information and use it in the FreeNAS config. Uh, while this is running, I'll show you that. Because um, FreeNAS, this directory information, is actually stored in plain text in an sssd.com file as well. Um, so the password that you type here is stored in plain text. To get around that, you create a Kerberos Realm and a Kerberos Key Tab. Uh, the Realm is created automatically in FreeNAS for you. But basically, you'll create a Key Tab file, give it a name, and give it a um, Kerberos principle, and then pick the Kerberos Key Tab file that, that was generated. And then FreeNAS will use that instead of using a, a plain text password. Uh, it's similar thing in Ubuntu, except there's no GUI for it, so you have to manually <coughs> go into the SSSD conf and specify where to, that key tab file stored. But like I said, we're not going to get into that. I'm going to go ahead and let this run, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so that's done. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to actually SSH into the locks, so that way I can copy and paste some stuff in. Um, 
what I did is on um, give me a second here and I'll uh, oops sorry what I did is I went ahead and I created this gist file over on github that includes the um, sssd.conf file that you need pretty much um, I'll go through these one at a line and then one by one for what you need to change um, I'm not sure what all these parameters are but if you just type into Google this parameter name it'll tell you exactly what it is but I will go through and show you exactly what you need to change to get it working alright so I'm gonna put this over on the other screen here and we've got our <coughs> I'm gonna change the um, session settings get a little bit bigger font so we can see easier alright so sudo vim oops Forgot. I need to install a couple preliminary packages because this is a base system Sorry, it's already installed. Pseudo vim. In Etsy SSSDs, there should be, you need to create, if there isn't a file, you need to create one. Pseudo vim. <clears throat> and you're going to copy and paste in the contents of that, that gist. And I'll put that gist link in the in the bottom. <clears throat> okay, and then let's go through what these are. <clears throat> For this, this domains, it needs to be whatever the domain name is of the active directory. So in this case, it's relative.media. There needs to be a uh, active directory domain block like this, and it should be domain slash, and then whatever the domain name is. It has to match exactly like this, and the domain name here has to match oops, has to match exactly but what uh what it is for active directory you can give any description you want here so I can call this like lab domain controller <coughs> relative oops just let's just do that um, LDAP, Kerberos 5, Kerberos 5 for off and um, change pass. And then this LDAP URI, this is where you need to specify the host name of our, <coughs> excuse me, of our, uh, our Active Directory server. So it's hostname dot the full domain name. You could also do an IP address here. I've never done that before, so you might run into uh, domain DNS resolution issues. Um, I would just use the, uh, the domain name controller there. This LDAP schema, RFC 2307BIS, this is the schema that's used to map usernames and passwords uh, to Active Directory. And then this default bind DN and this auth token right here, this uh, default auth token 12345, these two you need to be set to be your username and password that you're going to use to bind to Active Directory. It doesn't need to be the administrative account. It can be any any account that has authority to bind or to do lookups. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a um, LDAP user. Oops. Yeah, we're going to create an LDAP user. If I'd open the right windows here. So I'm going to go back to the DCS01. window here again I'm to close it down I'm gonna go ahead and create an LDAP user account if it isn't already I can't remember um, Active Directory users and computers 
We're going to do two things here. We're going to get the full OU. Oops, under users. Yeah, I see I didn't create one yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create an act an LDAP user. Oops, not a computer. User. LDAP user. Just like that. Let's give it a password. Apples. Alright, and I don't want this password to ever be changed, and I don't want the password to ever expire. Click on next, click on finish. <clears throat> next you're gonna do is you're gonna go to view advanced features. That's gonna show a bunch more information and allow us to grab that uh, common name for this user we just created. Double click on the user and go to attribute editor. Scroll down and look for this distinguished name. Click on view and copy this. Go back to our um, SSH session here. Hopefully it'll let me copy and paste into this. And that's gonna go right there. Nope, didn't look like it did. All right, so I gotta type this in. It doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. Password is whatever the password is set. Um, the LDAP user search base is going to be whatever you want to search for based on. So in this case, it's this, the user's OU. Same thing if you right-click and go to Properties. Attribute Editor. It's this Distinguished Name field. CN equals users. DC equals relative. DC equals media. Same thing uh, if you have different uh, group, a different group uh, common name. You could put it there, but in this case, the default you don't. This is all left. This is all already configured. This binds, you're saying, grab the username from the SAM account name field in Active Directory. Grab UID number from UID number field. This is basically all this right here is mapping the LDAP side, LDAP schema to an Active Directory schema, basically. Um, from one column name to another is basically how you're mapping it all out. Um, this right here needs to map the be the same name as your domain name. In this case, relative.media for me. Once that's done, go ahead and save and exit. <clears throat> the other file we need to edit is NSS switch. NSS switch.conf. Um, it should auto edit it for the most part. Let me pull up the Yeah. Yeah, it should auto edit and have the password SSS, the group SSS, and then this net group and sudoers SSS SSS. <clears throat> so if it didn't do it, make those changes. Um, the next thing you need to do is sudo service I actually had to reboot the system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'll be back when it's back up. Alright, so for me, I ran into an issue. Um, <coughs> basically, this error cannot read. And that's because I didn't fix the permissions after I created the file. So if you if you tail syslog under, under var log, so sudo tail dash at var log syslog, you'll get these over and over and over again. 
this is the uh, this is the command I ran, and basically you're just watching this file, this syslog file. Um, if you get that, you need to fix the permissions on that file, that SSSD file that we created. <clears throat> it needs to be sudo chmods or chmod. Basically, because that that password is in plain text, it's warning because it's it's erroring out because it's read read by anyone, and we don't want that. Um, so now that I fixed that, it automatically restarted the SSSD service, and look at that. You can see the administrator and my user ID there automatically. <clears throat> You'll notice here this exports home. Exports home. What we're going to do is we're going to create a. Um, in the last series, we're going to create NFS shares and mount them on these paths here. All right, so that should be it. We've got um, to wrap up. We've got FreeNAS working with CIFIS shares. It's bound to Active Directory. We've got a Windows uh, server, Active Directory environment with users in it and their Linux IDs are all mapped over appropriately. And then finally we've got a Windows uh, 7 machine, if I can get it pulled up here, um, that is binding to Active Directory and we did folder redirection. So we mapped a the Windows um, Windows user folders like documents, downloads, pictures. We mapped downloads and pictures to those um, network shares and got those to work automatically. Like I said in the third part, we'll go over configuring NFS shares in Ubuntu and getting the permissions to work across operating systems between Windows and Linux. Um, after that, we may touch base into uh, configuring FreeNAS plugins and getting those permissions set up to play nice with the Active Directory environment. <clears throat> Alright, thank you. Thanks for watching.